Hi, I'm Larry Clay, founder and president of Clay Construction and chair of the Provincial Education and Training Committee for the Canadian Home Builders Association of BC. If you are a general contractor who wants to build new homes in British Columbia, then you'll need to become a licensed residential builder. Licensing benefits everyone, the industry and the consumer. To get a license, you need to meet qualification requirements in both competency and experience. One way to prove your competency is through the Prior Learning Assessment and Recognition or PLAR process. BC Housing will now tell you how the PLAR process works. All general contractors constructing single-family homes and small residential buildings under Part 9 of the BC Building Code must be licensed. And if you're applying for a new residential builder license, then you'll need to show that you have the required training and experience to qualify. There are a few ways to show that you are qualified for a new residential builder license. The first is to have current experience as a licensed residential builder. You may apply for a new license in addition to your existing one, as long as your existing license has not expired, been suspended, cancelled or closed. If this is your first license application or your previous license is no longer in good standing, you will be required to meet the qualification requirements. There are two ways to meet the qualification requirements. The first option is to show that you have a minimum of 24 months of experience managing or supervising residential construction gained in the past five years and by successfully completing approved training and examination in seven core competency areas. More details about the seven core competency areas will be presented later. The second way is to demonstrate that you have equivalent education and experience through the Prior Learning Assessment and Recognition, or PLAR, process. The PLAR process recognizes on-the-job training, life experience, and other forms of training as ways to establish licensing qualifications. Sometimes people gain the knowledge and skills they need to carry out a task outside any formal education systems or approved industry or education programs. This is equally true in the construction industry. BC Housing believes that builders who already have extensive knowledge from on-the-job training should be able to show that they know what they are doing instead of having to take the prescribed training and exams. In the PLAR process, applicants send in evidence of these skills and knowledge for review. Assessors evaluate each submission to ensure the applicant has sufficient knowledge and skill to meet all the prescribed competency areas. To be a successful PLAR applicant, you must demonstrate a general to good understanding of each of the seven competency areas as prescribed by the Homeowner Protection Act regulation. In other words, you must have the necessary knowledge and skills to carry out your work responsibilities in a professional manner. The seven core competencies listed in the regulation are 1. Relevant enactments 2. Construction and management supervision 3 construction technology, four, customer service and home warranty insurance, five, financial planning and budget management, six, legal issues, and seven, business planning, management and administration. The licensing and consumer services section of the BC Housing website explains these competencies in more detail. It is important that you review each core competency before starting the PLAR process. Knowing these details will help you with a self-evaluation of your education, knowledge, and other relevant training. Which is the next step? When you review each of the seven core competencies, ask yourself the following questions. Have you taken approved training from a recognized provider for some but not all of the competency areas? Have you taken formal training that is not recognized but that might be equivalent? If you haven't taken training in a subject, have you had enough work experience that you could pass a written or oral exam on the subject? Do you have written records that you could include in your submission that describes the training? And do you have documents that show your successful completion of courses, such as certificates or transcripts of results? Be honest with your answers as a licensing qualifications assessor will be asking similar questions when evaluating your PLAR submission.
If your evaluation reveals that you have major knowledge gaps in one or more competency area, it is recommended that you complete approved training in those areas before moving forward with your application. You can find approved training on the Education Registry section on the website. Remember to keep accurate records of your training, including completion certificates, because they will be needed for your license application. If, after completing your self-evaluation, you believe that you have a sufficient understanding of all seven competencies, then the PLAR process may be the right path forward for you. However, you should be aware that the PLAR process is a big commitment and the review can take a long time to complete. There are no guarantees that the PLAR review will be successful, but the more approved education courses that you have successfully completed, the quicker and easier the licensing process will be. In order to obtain your residential builder license as a general contractor, you'll first need to complete the online application accessible from the Builder Portal on Licensing and Consumer Services section of the BC Housing website. There, you'll be asked to enter all of your experience and training online. Once you've completed the online form, you're required to download, print, and sign the application. You may submit your completed document via fax, email, or mail. The website provides further details. For applicants who would like to use the PLAR process to meet the qualification requirements, you should include all of your evidence to support your experience and training with your signed license application. The evidence you provide should include completion certificates for all the approved qualification courses that prove you've successfully completed the training and passed the required exam or assignment. If you took courses that are not listed on the Education Registry as approved qualifications training, you should still include them in your application, but you'll need to identify which parts of the seven core competencies you believe the training covers. You will also need to submit the course syllabus or outline that describes the course content with your application. If you don't have training or equivalent training in all seven competencies, you'll need to provide evidence showing how your work experience demonstrates your competency in the remaining areas. In this case, we expect you to have significantly more experience than the required minimum 24 months in order to successfully demonstrate that you obtained your knowledge and skills on the job. We recommend that you provide a resume that lists all your work related to residential construction. It is important to include specific evidence of your experience because the more years of experience you are able to prove, the more likely your PLAR review will be successful. A licensing qualifications assessor will review your resume and the training records that you submitted with your application. No two PLAR applications are the same and the assessor will work with you to identify what additional evidence will be required in order to recognize your prior training and experience. Remember, even if you have all the approved training or equivalent training in the seven competencies, you must still show evidence of your 24 months experience managing residential construction gained in the last five years. Evidence of experience may include references from supervisors, partners, and clients you worked for. The references should include specifics, such as the project address, start and end dates of construction, the type of project, was it a new build or a renovation? And your specific role in the project, such as site supervisor or project manager. If you've got copies of building permits with your name listed as the builder, then be sure to include those as well. Although experience managing residential construction of new homes is preferred, alternative construction experience, such as large residential renovations and commercial or industrial construction may be considered as equivalent. Also, if your construction experience was not as a construction manager, but in another capacity, perhaps as engineer or architect, you may submit any project experience you feel is relevant for review. In either case, if you wish to have your experience considered as equivalent, you must provide an explanation for how this experience directly relates to residential construction. After you've submitted your licensed residential builder application, including all your supporting documentation, a licensing qualifications assessor will conduct a review of your application. You should be aware that reviews are performed on a first-come, first-served basis 
and there will be a waiting period before your application is examined and your evidence assessed. There is no fast-track process for PLAR submissions. Here are a few tips to help minimize delays with your application. Applications with completed approved training will be processed more quickly than those requiring a detailed PLAR assessment. Incomplete applications cause delay, so it's crucial to ensure your application is complete. Make sure that all questions have been answered fully and all supporting documents have been included with your application. Once the Licensing Qualifications Assessor has started reviewing your file, you can expect further questions regarding your application. You may be asked to take part in an interview with an expert assessor to determine your knowledge and experience in one or more of the seven competency areas. If your PLAR review is successful, your education and experience will be accepted as equivalent and a new residential builder license will be issued. If your PLAR review was unsuccessful, your license application may be rejected. However, in cases where the PLAR review has identified only a small gap in training, a license conditional on you completing the outstanding education may be issued. If you feel the PLAR process is a suitable option to obtain your residential builder license, you should consider the commitment and time required for a PLAR review. There are no guarantees that your PLAR review will be successful. We recommend that you take the time to carefully review the relevant information on the BC Housing website or call Licensing and Consumer Services with any questions. Licensing helps raise the bar for professionalism in the residential building industry. We hope that this video has given you the knowledge required for you to determine whether the prior learning assessment and recognition process is the right approach for you to move forward with your residential builder license application. Good luck.